Welcome. So I wanted to, in this video, just go over um, one main thing, primarily, at, I guess, at first starting off with logging on to DP Cloud. Following that, how to create a subsite or website for your class. Um, subsequent videos that I, that I, instructional videos that I plan to make <coughs> will include how to add certain apps, specifically one app called Document Library, and then uh, following that, another video perhaps on um, customizing and personalizing your website to make it uh, make it look good, make it look like it's it's your own. Um, so stay tuned for that. But for now, it's just uh, logging on and creating a subsite. So if you're on a board computer or a tablet, simply typing in the address bar in any internet uh, or internet explorer, I guess is one the board uses. You would type DP Cloud. Now, if you're not in a board computer or tablet, you have to type dpcloud.dpcdsb.org, and it'll bring you <clears throat> to this sign-in page. So you use the same credentials you would use to log on to a board server, and you just sign in. What pops up is called the welcome page. I believe that's what it's called, at least I call it that. Now, I do admit creating a subsite isn't perhaps the most intuitive thing to do, and it does require some time, some initial investment in time, but I do have to say it is it is definitely worth that, that time investment. So you're going to begin by clicking on the tile that says Newsfeed. It's the icon with the newspaper, and in just a moment the screen will change, a new tab opened up in my on my computer. So then click on, uh, I like to call this the cog or the wheel, I've also heard it called, and you click on site contents after the drop down menu has popped up. Then click on new, another drop down menu will pop up, and you click on subsite. Great, so you're on your way now to creating your website, and you can give it a title. So if you're teaching English, grade 9, academic English, let's say, you would type um, something related to that course. So grade 9, Mrs. Smith's grade 9 academic English course. Uh, for now, I'm just going to write sample site. <clears throat> now, you could write something in your description here. I usually don't, but it's up to you. Get all of this stuff, you can definitely change. Um, and I'll show you how to do that perhaps in another video. Now, where it says website address and in that field you have to uh, fill in, you're going to create a subsite name. And it's usually just what I like to do is I like to type the, to write the course code. So, SCH31 or whatever other course code you may use, followed by last name. <coughs> now, everything else should stay the same for a class website or class subsite, except for, now this is really important, under user permissions, you have to click on use unique permissions. I'll show you what this does in just a moment, but once you're done, you can scroll down and click on create. Now this can take um, five seconds, it can take a full minute, and just uh, depends on the servers, depends on your, on your internet connection, <clears throat> but it usually doesn't take too long. Okay, it looks like it's done creating the site. So it's created the site. Now, these are this is the part that I had mentioned before where it was important to click on unique permissions because clicking on unique permissions automatically creates three types of groups. One type of group is going to be the visitors to the site and this group will only be able to read content on your site. They cannot modify, change, format, delete items you upload onto your site. So this is where your students would go and we're going to give it a group name. <coughs> so we'll call this, um, let's just say student visitors. or simply visitors is fine. Um, this is members, so we'll just call it members. Now members can contribute. There are certain things that they cannot do. So if you're team teaching or if you're uh, sharing a subsite with a colleague, this is where his or her name, or this is where you may give them permission to contribute to the site. 
But if you'd like to still remain the sole owner of the site to have full control, it says it already. Just like that here for teacher numbers. <clears throat> okay. So owner of the site. Um, hopefully this works. So it's a site. Now that you've finished filling in those fields, you can click OK. Now, at this point, you can add students by simply typing their student IDs. You can also add uh, teachers here by typing in their either employee IDs, that's usually best, or their uh, last name followed by their first name. But when usually when I'm making a subsite, when I have made subsite, I don't have my class list in front of me. So I always I usually I, I always actually save this edition of students um, and even teachers until after I've created the site. So I've just named the groups and I'm going to click on OK. <clears throat> Great. Now I'm done. Except there's lots more I could do here. Um, it looks pretty bare. It doesn't really look like a website. Uh, the first thing I like to do, and I know this gets into customization of your site, but the first thing I like to do, because um, this box or these tiles here, um, I, I, I understand what why they're automatically, or they defaulted to pop up, but I like to remove them personally. So let's just remove that. <clears throat> just takes a moment. And you've created a website. Now, following videos, I'll show you how to add apps to organize your site, um, how to add, and then how to, of course, add students to, to, sh to share your site and that, uh, they, so that they'll be able to see and to even, in some cases, contribute. So before we end uh, this video, I think it's important that I show you how you can access your sites once you've logged off, shut down your computer, or left for the day, how can you come back to your site? So to do that, you can go to sign in again onto DP Cloud, and you'll be signed on to the welcome page. Now you will need to go back into Newsfeed um, to access your site, although you could. Uh, you just go to SharePoint. And all of the sites that you follow now, I haven't gotten into following just yet, but I should show you now. So we'll go back to your site and just, it was open in, my, in a different tab. I'd like to follow my own site so that it's easier to access. So I click on that star right here next to the word follow. <clears throat> okay, I'm already following it. Uh, and it, it appears right here. So you click on that. And now I have another tab with the same Subsite. So that's how you access your site. <clears throat> now we'll get into another video. We'll get into how to share um, and how to use the different functions in your in your site to control permissions and groups and individuals and how they can contribute and change the look and feel of your site. I can show you my um, my site just to give you an idea as to what something might look like. So, we'll use this one. <clears throat> so, I've embedded videos. I have all of my units organized. Um, I have links to class notebooks, um, online online assessments run through Office 365, um, communicate to students through here, um, assessments, comments are here as well. I have a calendar, a course calendar here that I should update before we head back <clears throat> into class. So that's this is one or one way to design your site. There are other designs. I believe there are 14 or 16 um, default site designs you can choose from. This is just one of the ones that I've chosen. But you can make your site your own. And for now, that's it. But um, coming up, we'll have more videos on how to create those. Like I have over here, so these are these are apps or folders, as they're commonly called, where you can organize um, items that you upload to your website and however you wish to organize them. And then we'll go over also how to customize your website to make it look like a bare site. And it's something that uh, that's just that's yours. All right. Thanks for now.